What I wanted to do is I wanted to bring this to your attention. You know, we've had some folks that have violated. We did pull the one permit on the Alice's Eight Nursery and they're back. They're asking to, you know, shortchange that so they can come back a month earlier and file a permit. Uh, we had we caught Wellington Ag this year. They were dumping without a permit and we, we, made, we made them pay the, the penalty. But it's a constant struggle and I'm not sure I could, you know, I gotta tell you very honestly, it's hard for staff to keep up with. I mean, we get more complaints and there are more situations occurring. And I think it's just time to have the discussion and have council give, either affirm the direction back in 2013 when we kind of loosened the regs or try to go back to something stricter. And I will tell you, when we loosened the regs, um, I think Councilman Bolson, they kind of uh, put it as almost like a zoning in progress. We have not actually gone back with the town attorney and tried to make any changes since 2013. So the regulations that are in place are from the ordinance that you adopted 2012-03. So it's a question, you know, whether you want to go back to a stricter enforcement, if you want to make any changes to that ordinance, just what you want to do in this situation. Uh, if you have any specific questions about any aspect of what's been going on, I'll be happy to address that. Okay. Question, uh, council, discussion, Jim. Um, I'd almost like to make a motion we uh, impose a um, moratorium um, effective uh, immediately and, and move it through our, our, our committees to come up with something. I, I, Keith's comment uh, earlier, um, you wouldn't have been here for this, but um, I, I think it's, I was, I was impressed with somebody from the Equestrian commercial perspective that says, "Hey, we got too much coming in. We got plenty that we have, and we get it out, and he ships it out." Um, I, I would think we need to close the door for anything coming in, and more time would be able to do that. Um, work on changing our ordinance, and so I make a motion we we uh, impose it. Okay, is there a second? It's for discussion. Oh, what's that? For discussion. Okay, second by Bell. All right. Um, he ships it out. So or you ship your No, it's oh. a rhetorical. If he's shipping it out, it's got to go somewhere too. So we have to consider that aspect of it. Now, maybe we want to say people can't bring it in, but we have to allow what's here, and it can be used here, sure. or else, you know, so that, that issue should, should be addressed. You know, there's nothing that says that they don't take it from Keith's place down the end of the road and dump it in the mm -hmm. Nana Plantation. Mm -hmm. yeah. okay. So, and if that's the case, you know, great. You know, we can't become, we can't become somehow we're okay because we ship it all elsewhere and pollute somebody else. So we, I'm okay with maybe shutting out and bringing it from elsewhere in, but we have to allow, and you know, that might actually help, help our problem out. Right. And I, and I would be agree. I think we've got enough equestrian here that will provide for the needs, the legitimate needs of the people here. But but I know I don't know what it's like on the other roads, but on D Road, it seems like I'm getting four or five trucks a day. They're coming in here all the time. They're coming in after hours. They do not follow what we're wanting, and uh, the flies are just getting surveilled. There was a truck tonight when I was pulling in. Yeah. yeah, I saw it. Yeah, so I tried this morning when I was coming out that way. So, so is, is that the right is that the right wording of moratorium on it? Well, we deal with it? Well, I don't know that, how you can do that from the enforcement standpoint. Well, if it's not yeah. allowed, allowed, you know, then we're gonna have a couple of, just a couple of concepts. So if you're gonna do a moratorium, you're gonna need to be marked because uh, um, uh, actually I don't know if you do. Um, you may need to this kind of, this isn't a land development, right? It's not in the code yet, but I guess you can screw it. Oh, yeah, we may, be, we may need to go, because the moratorium needs to go through a formal adoption process, but the motion would be basically my letter from the zoning in progress to give us the time to impose the moratorium. Oh. And so that's the first step. It's the first step in the process. All right, let me, let me back up a second. Is there some way we can word it differently to where we can get it to stop the video? In other words, you use the term moratorium. Well, that's, yeah, you would stop it while we go through that's the stop gap. It would be a moratorium. Okay. It's not a like it's because we say it's in progress. Yeah. And that's so that's why we need to go to the planning zoning board and, and then bring the more 
more importance to you in the two meetings after March? But it can be effective now. Right? Okay. okay. That's the second thing is the scope of the moratorium. Mm -hmm. Is the moratorium all manure or dumping while we review the issue? Or just on bringing it in? And if it's, if it's not black and white, then I have to look at a lot of issues as far as the ability to regulate Internal versus external. And I think I think just from bringing I, in, I would so. amend my motion to include you know, just the bringing in manure into the well house because we've already paid for the permit. And and that is going to be the next thing is we do have people who have paid for permits. We may you know the moratorium basically is the moratorium on the, on the further issuance of permits under this ordinance. But that except for those that originate from the town. And it sounds like the two biggest are the ones you have an issue. Uh, how about, how we, about have, we have it through though. We, we kicked those back, but that was the gentleman who I only had a couple of years last year. We just make a new condition of the permit that, the, that any manure that's all has to be all from within Los Angeles Road. Yes. And any new permanency issues from this point forward would be that way. Yes. Yeah. So any permits have to be. Picked up and hauled in Los Angeles. On what exists, exists until it's over and then it's a new permit, right? So you're saying if we can approve those while the moratorium is being discussed, is that? Or do you not want a moratorium? Maybe you not just want to do a zoning in progress to change the code that allows only the transit of manure within the town. That would, be, well, that, would be, so that would be simpler. <coughs> And that would be a zoning in progress as of this evening. <clears throat> well, knowing knowing the feeling of the council after a motion was made, I would revise my motion to be more in line with that. I didn't know we were already ready to say, let's just focus on my my the problems I see it is was coming in. <clears throat> and that's what I'm addressing, and that's why I raised the motion. But I would amend the motion to be worded differently than we would have a moratorium and the time we're taking is just to set up regulations that would allow the intra movement within the town and it would stop any inter movement. You basically outside. would revise it to require that all um, manure used or deposited in the town originates from the town. So it's right. basically the transit, the inter town transit of manure has to meet those two requirements. So with the permit, the guy with the permit could still haul it, but he's got to pick it up and lock it to grow. And it's going to and the one thing that I would certainly want to talk to Mike about in the future, no matter what we do, and maybe even Lieutenant Combs, is we really have to beef up our enforcement because we don't have a, you know, we, we don't have a lot of lot of weaponry to do that. And uh, you know, there are other processes out there, citations, notices to appear, things like that, to address. Hauler, because they, they're, I mean, you know, when, once it's done on a property, I mean, we know how to do that. That's not hard. That's the code enforcement process. But it seems like we have a lot of issues with haulers. It's hard to catch them. We have to react. Uh, they're, from what I'm hearing this time, that's really concerning me is that there appears to be a lot of dumping during nighttime hours. And obviously, and they're very aggressive when, yes. they get confront, when they're confronted by them. That's what I hear. Yes. I have right. to English. Um, yeah, well, the, that's what I was going to bring up. But I think our, our biggest issue is the enforcement. We, we we honestly do need to have someone here almost 24 hours looking for the illegal haulers um, to catch them because they're, they're most of them aren't coming during, during normal work hours. They're coming late at night. Like I said, right when I was coming here, I saw I saw two trucks on E road. And um, but uh, the other thing I, I, I would suggest is if we know the peak time period for, for manure, maybe we should uh, enact a, a ban during the winter season. Because during the summer, we don't really have a problem with, with the dumping. It's during winter when they're here at 24 hours a day and all our nights just dumping and dumping and dumping. Um, but I, I think what we do need to focus more on enforcement. If we, if we do have to hire um, you know, some, some more staff to, to go out and, and look for, for these uh, Callers and, and cite them, then, then we do need to cite them because they're not coming. Kind of really <coughs> and uh, we do need someone at night to catch them and to really throw the book at them. We already have the fines, which are pretty stiff. We just need enforcement. 
Well, that, that actually takes you to the next point that Mark made, which was when he exempts people from fines, he's reducing our resources, which if we were collecting, even if it wasn't forty dollars a load, whatever it was, we were collecting that, we could use it for a deputy or somebody that we could pay for additionally to look for that. You know, and so maybe we have to we have to address that issue. We we had talked with one another and, and I thought we had kind of incorporated it, but and that was eliminate for the winter months. That it was we were just not going to accept it from you know October to March. You know, and that, that it would not come in during those months. One, one thing at that point and not to really jump up too far ahead, but if we if we look at the letter from Bernardo Alzai that he does have a couple of points as to why he wants to do what he wants to do in the winter. I don't know how loud they are and how many yeah, it's a it's a ton of, well, it's a ton it, of money for them. Yeah. There's, we're not trying to deny that they're fertilizers, but we're not trying to make it cheaper for them and free for them. And the economics in the end are what have to do this, and we don't have to be Wellington's dumping ground. Right? Yeah. You know, but we are we are trying to also to promote our own equestrian industry, so we, we have to recognize that there is going to be this manure, and we're going to have our own produced more and more and more. And so we're going to have to provide a place we're going to have to develop until there's a regional solution to that. Yeah. Okay, Mike and Jim. Well, just, just a couple of things. I'm, I'm hearing discussion about a ban during certain times of the year. Would that be an absolute ban? Because that would mean, because if you're already going to change the intra town transfers, then the, 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 the absolute ban. You know what? Right. that too. It would also help. I'm courses. ready to go. And yeah, but I'm ready to go back to, to you know just nothing from outside. And then the second the second question was and, 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 um, when you were discussing this, I believe you know, it's, it comes back to me slowly, and, and you know, sometimes it's foggy and whatever. But there was a conversation about reducing the size of the loads because in that respect, anything that was generated inside the town would be 20 to 25 cubic yards. Load, um, which would also have helped with enforcement identifying big loads versus intra town loads. But I only bring that up because that was a concept that was discussed two years ago right. on, that, on that issue. Yeah. Um, so my, my hope is that this will maybe generate a local person that would have a smaller truck and maybe put him in business to where he could fall within our town. And it would, there's a ban on taking it out of the town. Right. Yeah. No man will take it out of there. Just, just <laughs> no right. Maybe the no right. it is something we can all right. interact with right. around and we'll solve the main problem. And, and my biggest concern is going to come down to, and Bill's going to address it, one of these days we are going to be surprised with a water quality issue and, and all of a sudden we'll be coming into the rainy season in Palm Beach County or South Florida Water Management will say we cannot dump into the C-51 and we will have problems and there'll be no way of going back on, you know, backtracking and trying to get it straightened out. So we would be in trouble. Well, that's part of what, what uh, Keith referred to in the best management practices. Sure. You know, there, there needs to be a little bit of pre-treatment and not just immediately dumping and flushing your pasture every time it rains into the canal system. You have to have a little bit of swelling and you have to have some on-site retention some other things with water quality that the farms do. And they have to take part of the responsibility for what they do. And just like, you know, and that's, that may be something that the water district addresses with people in the future. Right. Is, you know, a little bit more attention to pre-treatment and something that Steve Yelly has mentioned before. And, and really on the, the two subdivisions that were done in the town in the late 90s, both of them did end up with extensive pretreatment areas and you're looking at hundred year floods before they before they even drain <coughs> off. Those are the kind of things that can address some of those issues where it's not a catastrophe and we don't need a three thousand acre filter marsh to clean up our eight thousand acres. Right. If we do it on site and don't get back me up on what I'm saying. Everybody yeah. takes some thinking and takes some some doing. Right. right. Sure. As I, if I understood it correctly, and, and Keith, if, if this is not close, that you're following a certain procedure. I don't did not realize it is part of 
the state best management practices for dealing with manure. I know Wellington has put in place certain restrictions on manure in terms of how you store it and coverage and all that, which sounded exactly what you were doing. Mm -hmm. But I wasn't sure that that was a state statute in terms of built in a state that said this is the best management practice for manure. Is there, a, is, there a, is there a best management practice for the positive manure or just what you There do? is a best management practice for Florida equine operations that addresses manure. Is there any way we can get a copy of that? Uh, we got a copy. Yeah. Okay, we got a copy. I'll take a look at okay. it. Well, so that's also something that I have a strong suspicion we're not following in our town. For those who live here, um, but to, re so to recap, the motion, the motion I made and modified was that we would have a motion I made and, and, some, and modified was that we have a zoning in progress for manure, hauling, restricting anything coming in, um, and that we were working on um, distribution within the town. Yeah, it would be anything deposited in town would have to originate in the town. Right. That's that's way we would Yeah, you're right. Second and that would be a 12 month, month, second 12 month out of year. I think if you try to do it other than that, Dave, even I understand no, I agree. Point. all the time. All the time. Yeah, yeah. You make it cost them. Yeah. And then, mm -hmm. yeah. My thought was we would cut it out altogether for those months we took out the big equestrian events in Wellington. Right. But I, I, no, I'm, I'm fine with that. A motion a second. I've got two public comments. Bill Laddock and uh, John Ryan. Bill Laddock, you wrote. Uh, first off, uh, let me thank you for taking the horse by the tail. Um, the uh, yeah, this whole thing, uh, Mr. Harris brought it up, water quality, and I've been feeding that drum for a lot of years. I've been in the papers before the Academy of Sciences. 2007, basically on our canals and in the newer problem. Uh, it all started way back. Uh, Army Corps of Engineers and South Florida Water Management uh, made Wellington do something because they were uh, putting too much phosphorus into WCA 1A or Arthur R. Marshall. So, as part of their best management practices, yes, they came up with who got to contain it and everything. Uh, Dr. Charles Carragher and I, as a member of the uh, Florida Environmental Secretary, I've never heard of such a thing before, I thought it was a force, um, went over and we were invited by them to go tour their facilities, and luckily it was a rainy day, and I saw the manure collection site collecting rain and running out this nice coffee down towards the drain. I said, put a lid on it. I'm no genius, but hello. Uh, anyway, um, so. Uh, Yes, there is a problem here. Uh, a couple of things before I get into what I really wanted to talk about was um, the internal. Uh, you said put someone in the business. Uh, that's going to help a lot of people here because you can basically run it like a co-op. No dumping fees anymore. Okay, just pay the guy and make a profit for picking it up from Pete's and dumping it on Ryan's like that. Whatever. Um, Another one, I don't know if you've ever heard of this, you're finding the haulers. How about the receivers? Okay, because they know that they're breaking it. Okay? Um, this past weekend I went out and took some water samples. Not too bad, we haven't had a lot of rain. Uh, back in the July 2013, a uh, resident uh, called me over to get a sample out of Sea Canal because she saw some stuff coming out of the pipe. And I collected it, took it home, and started to analyze it. It took me five dilutions to get it on my high range phosphorus. Now I'm just looking at soluble reactive phosphorus, not total phosphorus. When the, the EPA or water management district comes in, they're going to look at total phosphorus. I can do that too, but I just didn't spend the time to digest the, the, whole, the whole water sample. Um, and that came out to 7,958 parts per billion soluble reactive phosphorus in that one sample. Now you gotta remember that what Airblade's uh, restoration is shooting for is 10 parts per billion total, total phosphorus in the Everglades. And nobody in the scientific world believes that we're going to feed 
10 parts per billion over and then let it put it in directly. But we ought to be shooting for something around that 30 to 50. Okay, what was it? But one of the, the one I found was, so I've got copies of this, 7,958 parts per billion soluble reactive phosphorus. So total, I don't even know what total was, more than that, a lot more. Um, I couldn't believe it. I had, uh, when I, had I ran the mass back through uh, a, a chief uh, chemist over at South Florida Water Management, who was totally unbiased. He did his master's degree with me. Um, <laughs> But anyway, uh, the stuff at home, I, I run uh, National Institute of Standard uh, Quality Control, and it's an R squared of 0.9989, which is embarrassing, so good. Um, anyway, so uh, this past weekend, um, Sea Canal, about an eighth of a mile south, oh, and the uh, same, uh, I won't make, use any names on uh, nurseries. St. Mercy was 68.5 soluble. Uh, e Road out in front of my house was 26 parts per uh, million. A Canal halfway between OP and Collecting was 25 parts per million. Uh, D Road and Collecting Canal was 19. And I suspect it was lower for back pump going out of C59. Because in the studies I did in 2004, 2007, during the non rainy season, the dry season, I found out that South End of Blackstatch Groves had lower phosphorus in the canals than the North End because we kept our stuff moving that way. Anything that came down this way was pushed it back, so we were concentrating it to the North End. Uh, another thing I missed on seeing in the ordinance was the depth of spread. Because there's one nursery that I looked at. Uh, the depth was somewhere between three and four feet deep. Okay. Completely over many, many acres. Okay. And um, when you're getting, because the uh, one other graduate student I had did the extract, uh, where did that student? Anyway, it was about 20, it was about 26 milligrams of phosphorus per grams dry weight of manure. Now, manure is pretty wet, but we also did dry manure, and it didn't drop that much because it surprised me. Um, this past weekend, I also did some photomicrographs of some algae I collected. Everybody's seen the pond scum, mermaids, moss, or whatever they call this thing in the canals. Uh, it's primarily spirogenera, which is a green algae. That's the photomicrographs I took, and that's uh, the photomicrographs that uh, somebody else took. Uh, off the web. Um, but the troubling part is that here's, this is the one from uh, November of 2013. Here's this fire which is a green algae, no big deal by itself. The darker ones here are either oscillatoria or uh, lingvia. I'm not that good of an algologist to tell those two apart. It's a cyanobacteria. The reason I bring that up is that allelio can let one organism affecting another organism. Spirogyra can kick in oscillatoria and lingvia's production of toxins. Okay. As far as I know, we don't have any toxin problems with the three-letter word yet. Um, but again, anything we can do to keep uh, the uh, regulatory agency away from them because you know, we're not going to be able to afford to live here if we have to clean it up. And like uh, Councilman Olson A said, you know, we don't need to turn the entire guest property and everything south of Clayton down into a filtering market when there are ways to handle it. And uh, on site, I, I think, you know, your recommendation for internal, fantastic. Keep it up, keep it up. I wish I was back up there making a recommendation like that. Thank you, John. Uh, take care. Okay, John Wright. John Wright, 3508. They wrote, um, I read over the ordinance that were, exist that, <clears throat> that were currently under, and it referred to the Florida Statute 403.413, which is the Pollution and uh, Litter Statute. And under the definition of litter, it includes um, substance in any form resulting from agricultural operations. Now, the good news is that Florida statutes already give us a strict enforcement mechanism. 
they basically say that uh, any person that dumps litter in an amount exceeding 500 pounds in weight or 100 cubic feet in volume or in any quantity for commercial purposes is guilty of a felony. It's a felony of the second degree unless the municipality or the county has adopted a permit structure and unless the county or municipality has delegated the enforcement to a code officer. So what I think we need to do is to again look to the state statute to say to people, look, we're not going beyond what the state already says. We can't afford to give you a permit to pollute our water, our groundwater right. and our canal water. If it's over 100 pounds, uh, excuse me, over 500 pounds or 100 cubic feet, and you dump it, and we don't have a permit in place that allows you to dump it, one of the consequences is that the motor vehicle that was used to dump the litter that exceeds the 500 pounds of 100 cubic feet in volume is declared contraband and is subject to forfeiture. Ooh, <laughs> yeah. yeah, much more so than a fine. But a misdemeanor opens up for Lieutenant Gomes to issue tickets. He was hampered, and he told us this in one of an earlier meeting that he was hampered because as long as we called it code enforcement, mm -hmm. he couldn't do code enforcement for us. But if it's a second degree misdemeanor, he can issue the violation. And once he issues that violation, and that violation has the license number of a truck, and if it's going to a property that doesn't have a permit for in, in lots of edgy roads to be dumped there, and it does come in from outside and it exceeds those amounts, we've got a pretty heavy enforcement mechanism. So I think the thing we need to keep in mind, let's get this out from under code enforcement, because we specifically in our ordinance said, hey, you know, even though this is a violation, a law violation under Florida statutes, we're going to have a permit process in place, number one, which is an exemption. Number two, we're only going to enforce it as a code enforcement. So let's correct those two things. Rely on the state statutes to say, you know, you try and do this with these big trucks, and you may lose that truck. So I think that there are real teeth. If you go into Florida Statute 403.413, and you look at what it already says, and if we take it out of the category of a permit for non Latache Groves manure hauling, and um, you know we take it away from code enforcement, which is an expensive process with all kinds of time involvement of the town staff or the town attorney, we leave it in the hands of the tenant owners to issue a, a violation. Then you go under state statutes for dollar fines, number one, which he collects or the court system collects and gives us a share. <laughs> so that's a double thing. So I think we've got some remedies that we can take advantage of, and I think that they need to be incorporated in our thinking about this law and what we're doing. Okay. Let me just clarify that the ordinance says that um, authorizes the directs the law enforcement officers to just find that this ordinance, a violation of this is a violation of 403.413, it provides for code enforcement as a backup, where we we're allowed to use code enforcement where an officer doesn't issue a citation. Because I think an officer has to actually see it, do it, and issue it right there, as opposed to code enforcement can be on a complaint base, so it fills that gap. But the, but the primary role of the ordinance is that you already, you already provide for is to go look at the statute first. But, but also, where we got it confused is when we established this permit process, because that confused it and made it difficult for the PBSO to enforce it. If they know that it's not generated in Los Texas Roads, it is a second degree misdemeanor. And we don't have the confusion of having any permits for that, and we're not relying on a code enforcement.
Are we going to do that in July? Are we going to do it someday over the rainbow when we get around to it? Just do we have an idea? And if it's something that we really just, it's something we'd like to do, but really we can't see that we're going to be able to get to that for a period of time, I'd like to know that. So that if we want to, you know, if we want to put more resources towards that, we can, we can do that. And I think maybe by us listing them the way we want them, we can maybe put some dates down. For them. Yeah, and I, and I, don't want to, I don't want to set arbitrary dates on him and say you need to have a <coughs> on this day and then he can't do it. And that's not my intention right. at all. I just like to know. We'll be happy to get this done and always for you. We do that one that you need. Yeah, sure. And I guess picking up what Tom was saying, it sounds like well, there's a date specified to us as a town that something needs to be done. Then that's what you can put down on there. It certainly would be information that, that would be of value. Where we have, at some point, if we determine that we want something done by a particular date, then that would be something the council would ask you to put on your list in terms of target completion. But if you give it to us, a list, unless we've already done that, in terms of the item of target completion, add the dates that have to be done by, and and um, if you will, if there's something that you've got near completion, which gives us a sense that this is not long before it's done. Um, the other the other item, uh, I'm not sure I saw in here would be our annual, um, and maybe it's in there just to quickly see it, was our, our town roads for the FPS tax purposes. We have to do that You're right, that is not in there. That's an annual thing. You know, some of the I, I kind of mentioned in the back. I said some things that are that are that are recurring. Um, you know, we don't we didn't try to list everything, but that one I probably should list. Okay, that's just an example. But yeah, I like it. and that's a new day. Yeah, <coughs> yeah, you're right. All right, okay. go on. All right, and then moving on to ten B. And that one, Your Honor, based upon our <coughs> previous discussion, that's why I provided. No recommendations, but I wanted to hear how we were going to address that. Um, you know, that, I mean, he, he makes some arguments that uh, Councilman Bolson referred to earlier, but I mean, you know, we have a lot of problems last year, a lot of complaints, uh, but you, you try to indicate it at a meeting, pull the permit. Uh, he's the gentleman who had uh, Mr. Rios on behalf of Alza's Alza, he had the two permits where he was going to do a thousand loads, which just blew me away, and I said, no, wait a minute. And then, and then he came in with another one, a different piece, adjacent to that 10 acre piece that we did approve recently. He dropped us to 50 months. And I find it, you know, I just said, well, I'll take this to council, but you, technically you shouldn't be filing anything until March. Now we have further direction, so I think that's a move for as far as anything else. Yeah, I mean, by the time, if, if, if we can move forward, um, you know, the board is to be placed by the time this year is up. Good deal, we're very close to it. All right. Technically, as of today, as of tonight, we're not adding and allowing any more income, right? That's correct. So let's just say hypothetically, we want to consider the month waiver on, on the same. It would be subject to your motion tonight, which we could only originate from within the town. Good deal. So we're going on the absence of direction. We're going to let that continue. We're going to let it continue. Discuss that for a second, what you said. Do we want to let him have a permit? For in town manure? No, no, no. He, he, he can't get it. He can't get it on March 21st and just be able to get it on March 21st. Okay, right. He's and looking at so it from your question. I understand, but just so we address that, yeah. and he got his, he got his question called up. And Good. All right, moving to public comments. I have one. One other.
discussing it with probably one of the next couple of meetings, but the Boca Raton case um, was decided. That was the one about citizens' initiatives. Um, they interpreted the statute that consistent with the town, I guess my opinion had been about the ability to have an initiative on land use amendments. Um, and so um, no further motions were filed, so that case is now, that decision is now final for the PCA. And I believe that should wrap up and also be able to bring something to you the next meeting to conclude that matter. Um, but that also remains. Anything else? No, sir. Okay. You won't go Gators. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's time. Yeah. time. All right, uh, council members, no? Thanks, everyone, for coming. Ron? Thank everybody for coming. Happy birthday, Ron. Ace's birthday. Hey. <laughs> okay, Ron Ed. Uh, thanks, everyone, for coming and celebrating my birthday with me. Thanks for your meeting plan. There you go. Thank you. Um, a couple quick things. Um, some of you may or may not know that there is a, a large meeting tomorrow night mm -hmm. at Seminole Ridge. Um, I plan on meeting. The other thing is, Mark, have we yet posted the ordinance on golf courts on the website? I haven't seen it. And I'm not sure I'll double check. Uh, and I think Mr. Mayor suggested there would be something maybe on the website that to tell people what to, not just that there's an ordinance, but that there's some limitations, maybe a recap, maybe on the front page we put something, but I, I know the ordinance is not posted well, from what I've <coughs> The ordinance is there by virtue of the agenda items, but it's not pulled out itself and just yeah, I don't have the link. Yeah, I can't find it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And thanks everybody for coming, and I'm glad we had a production meeting tonight. Okay, and uh, thank you all for coming. I want to reiterate. Oh, yes. Uh, our community suffered a loss. Uh, Gary Morello passed oh, away this last, uh, the last yeah. week. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Where did, I, where did I hear that? Facebook. Yeah, somebody on Facebook. Oh, was that what was in the paper? I couldn't, I couldn't find it in the paper. So, you know, we looked for it. But, uh, so, anyway, he was. Facebook uh, last Yeah, that's where, that's where I got it too. Here is the he was uh, part of our community, well, has been for a lot of years. I mean, I got great memories of Gary's Midway. Oh, yeah. We first moved up here, we ate there every Sunday. You know, and they had the best breakfast to this day, I think, in Palm Beach County. So I did. Sorry, John G., but Gary was the best. Uh, and, and to reiterate what Jim said, uh, from what I understand, that everybody in the three zip codes yes. can vote on that issue tomorrow. And, uh, you know, Minto is looking for something to go to the county commission where everybody's for them. Right. And, uh, you know, so uh, if you can get out there and vote for that, we are allowed. So thank you all for coming. Motion adjourned. So.